What's up, I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick guide, I'll be showing you how to optimize Helldivers for the best possible FPS and gameplay performance on PC. This video is not going to cover Windows optimization at all. Instead, in the description down below, you'll find guides for Windows 10, 11, and NVIDIA. With enough said, let's get straight into the game. So, hopping in, we'll go ahead and find ourselves a planet to drop to. In space, with the default settings, which I'm pretty sure is pretty much all high, on a 3080 Ti at 2K, we're sitting at a solid 65 FPS, and and throughout the intro, it's been around 60, 70. Let's get across to a real planet just to see what kind of performance we get. So we'll head straight down. We'll land somewhere where it's hopefully safe just so we can get an idea of what it looks like. Obviously, every planet's gonna have its individual performance impact with different terrain, different amounts of foliage and things like that. But for the most part, playing on one should give you a general idea of what performance you get on other planets too. So on this one over here, there's tons of foliage, smoke, and things going on in the distance, leaving us with a solid 51, 52-ish FPS at default. If we head across to options and display, these are my settings, and the graphic settings are this here. For the most part, everything's up on high, but let's quickly run through the different presets before we get to optimizing the game. We'll start with Ultra, for which it makes the game look like this and runs at a solid 47-ish FPS. High, which takes it to 54. Medium, 56. And finally, low 79. This is by far one of the biggest jumps we've seen between all of the settings options, though it's noticeably disabled anti-aliasing for the most part. And of course, it's got rid of quite a bit of foliage. For the most part, this game looks pretty good on all of the options. So without further ado, I'll turn off my overlay and head across to the options display tab where we'll start our optimization guide. This very top section is all pretty much user preference and has almost no impact on how the game performs other than field of view, in which case you should set this to how you feel you enjoy the game. Don't let FPS numbers sway you with how you want it to feel. This option does technically affect frames, but it's not something you should really worry about. Camera shake is pretty much your preference, and it's an option I'd recommend lowering if you're someone who struggles from motion sickness. The same goes for on the graphics tab, if we apply these changes. The motion blur option is also something I'd recommend you lower, if not completely disable if you struggle with motion sickness. Then looking down to the second section on the display tab, graphics devices, your graphics card, I've got my dedicated GPU and my integrated one, just make sure you have the more powerful of whatever graphics card you have selected in order to give the game the best performance. Screen devices, whatever screen you're playing on, and resolution is the resolution of that display. Have this no lower or no higher than the actual screen's resolution, otherwise you're pushing pixels you don't see, losing performance, or things will be really blurry for no reason. Render scale is where we can adjust upscaling and things like that. We can start all the way on performance, ultra performance, balanced, quality, ultra quality, native, then super sampling and ultra super sampling. This may be a little bit more difficult to understand as it's not labeled FSR, DLSS, or anything like that, native is your normal native render resolution up here. If I set it to this and tap back into the game, let me just raise the graphics preset so we can see what's going on. At native resolution, ultra quality, 3080 Ti, at 2K, we're sitting at a solid 47-ish FPS, and this is what the game looks like. If we drop it to ultra quality, we jump to 56 FPS with only a small impact in visual quality. However, you can notice weird artifacts and things like that as we using upscaling to try and pull pixels out of pretty much nowhere. This is ultra quality that pushes us up to 56 FPS. We're rendering the game at a slightly lower resolution and using some sort of upscaling to bring it back up. Whether this is DLSS, FSR or something else, I'm not entirely sure. It's probably FSR or something along those lines as it works on Nvidia and AMD cards. If we push this to quality, everything seems noticeably more blurry and we've moved up to 58, 59 FPS. We'll quickly run through what's left, balanced, 62 FPS, performance, yet again 62, and ultra performance, which looks absolutely horrid, 71 FPS, though you can't see anything. Back up to native resolution, we're not doing anything fancy, we're just rendering the game. The other two options we have are super sampling, which should squeeze extra quality even though we're not actually seeing more pixels. So 48 FPS on native to super sampling drops us to 34. So we're probably playing the game at 4K, even though I'm only actually seeing 2K pixels. And finally, ultra super sampling, taking us down to 25 FPS. But wow, does the game look actually a lot better. I'm not too sure what resolution this could be. Maybe this is 4K, but anyways, we're entering at a much bigger size than our actual monitor, and we're just downscaling it to fit our actual screen. Though performance takes a massive hit. 
At 25, back to native, we jump up to 47, 48. So what would I recommend here? Well, I would only really recommend using ultra quality. Anything other than this is gonna make your game pretty much needlessly blurry. If you're running a much lower end system, consider pushing this down to quality, but that's really as low as I would go. Also, I gotta deal with something quickly. Okay, there we go. Back to where we were, 56-ish FPS with render scale ultra quality. Display mode doesn't really matter for the most part. You should set it to full screen for technically better performance on most systems, but oftentimes you won't see any performance difference between borderless windowed and full screen. It really depends on your system and your configuration. VSync should definitely be set to off, especially if you're trying to benchmark how your game is performing. That way your frames shouldn't be limited to what your monitor is, say 60 or whatever FPS. On top of this, you should only have this enabled if you're encountering screen tearing, but the top and bottom half of your monitor just don't seem to be matching up. On the graphics tab is where we can get much more granular control over the game. Motion blur, obviously lower this if, you, if you're someone who struggles with motion sickness. Depth of field, you can disable this if you'd like to see better into the distance. This is depth of field on and depth of field off from 55 to 58 FPS. I suppose there's definitely a technical improvement, so 58 versus 55. Personally, I don't usually play with depth of field on in FPS games or third person games, unless it's a more cinematic experience that I'm going after. With a small, technically improved FPS bump, this is something you might want to disable. Bloom is basically how light blows at bright objects and things like that. Turning this off, we don't really see a huge improvement in FPS nor quality. Having this on, however, adds to the general visual style. And just to keep this as fair as possible, I think I'll go back to native quality just for a better look of how things appear. Yeah, so 49. Considering further, sharpness is pretty much your preference and will mostly have an impact when you're using some kind of upscaling, using performance, balanced, etc. That's when you'll really need to adjust your sharpness option over here, especially when the game seems to get needlessly blurry at much more performant options. Then into the actual granular controls over the game. There's quite a bit here to go through, so we'll quickly run through this. Seems we're being attacked again. Okay, dealing with that, we're still sitting at a solid 50 frames, so we'll go deeper into the options. If you've messed around with the preset, you've probably noticed that the texture quality isn't changing. This is because this completely depends on how much VRAM your graphics card has. Lowering this won't really gain you any extra performance, but it's definitely limited by what your graphics card's memory entails. At least everything is broken down here for us. If you have a graphics card with three gigs of VRAM, choose low, medium for six, high for eight, and anything above eight gigs, which is 10, choose ultra. At least we're given numbers in this game so we know exactly what to expect. Let's set everything down to the lowest possible setting here, and let's mess around with each of the options so we see what kind of performance gain or loss we get. Moving from 85-ish FPS, object detail quality, we lose maybe one FPS, so there's a very small impact on performance here. Render distance from 85 to 84-ish, 83, there's a very tiny impact on performance. This will mostly be CPU bound. If you have a much slower CPU, this is an optional one to drop. In my case, I have a powerful CPU, so I can leave it up on the much higher options with practically no performance impact. Shadow quality from 84 to 81, 82. There's a small performance impact, though it's definitely not the biggest at maybe two FPS at most. Particle quality from 84 to 78. There's around six FPS here, moving between high and the lowest option. So this is definitely one of the bigger hitters when it comes to FPS performance. And I'd recommend leaving this on the lower end if your PC struggles with how particles look. If we have a look at the fire here, you can see it's noticeably blocky, but if we move to low, there's a tiny improvement, maybe medium, a little bit of an improvement. It's still noticeably blocky. And finally high, I think this looks a bit better, but it's still weirdly blocky. Maybe a restart would fix this. For me personally, I'd probably be leaving this on low as it has a minimal performance impact while still keeping it looking as good as possible. This is probably something that upscaling would hide. So playing on maybe ultra quality would probably hide these effects for the most part a little bit. It's still noticeably blocky. Moving to medium, there's a small improvement and high, it seems just as good as medium. So back to native. It seems like you'd want to choose either lowest or medium here as your two main go-to options. Just to go back to the lowest for a baseline, we're getting 85 FPS reflection quality. You'd expect to see practically no change, but from 85 to 74, even though there's practically no reflections around me, this has a huge profound impact on gameplay 
gameplay performance of around 10 FPS from 80 to 70, so this is definitely an option I'd recommend lowering even if there's not reflective objects around you. I did a quick spin around, so here's everything up to the highest quality when it comes to reflections, and I don't really see any reflection sources here, but our frames are definitely suffering. I'd recommend keeping this to low as we get around 78, whereas lowest, we're getting around 83-ish. So it's a very expensive option for the most part. I'd run this at lowest if you're struggling with frames, as it's probably one of the hardest hitting options here. Then space quality, this should have practically no impact on performance as we're not in space at the moment. And yeah, there's practically no difference. Ambient occlusion from 83 to 77, 78, there's a relatively big impact of around five to six FPS. So I'd recommend leaving this off if you're looking for extra performance. Screen space, global illumination, 83 to 80. There's a very small performance impact of around three. Rumble density from 83 to 79, around four FPS. Terrain quality from 82, 83 to 82 ish. There's practically no effect on performance, maybe one FPS. And for the most part, I don't see actual change when it comes to how the terrain looks. Maybe when you're flying around in the air, this has a bigger impact. Volumetric fog from 83 to 80 ish. There's around three FPS here, maybe two. So there's practically no performance impact for raising this option. Volumetric clouds, 83 to 76. There's maybe eight or seven FPS that we're losing here by changing this from lowest to high. Medium, we move maybe two FPS up. Low, practically no change between low and medium, and lowest, we gain about four or five FPS here. So either have this on lowest, medium, or high. Lighting quality from low 83 to high 81-ish, there's almost no performance impact, and to be honest, between low and high, there's not too much of a noticeable impact on how the game looks. Finally, anti-aliasing, this has a massive impact on how the game looks, from off 82, 83 FPS to on 79 FPS, there's a 3 FPS difference, so a very minimal impact, but the game does look noticeably blurrier, but infinitely better than having anti-aliasing turned off with weird blocky sharp edges around objects. This performance impact is definitely one that I'd want to take if you're playing at native resolution. This is native with anti-aliasing turned on. Let's actually just raise the foliage so you can see what's going on. So vegetation, we'll put to ultra. Now you can see much more vegetation here. This is anti-aliasing at native 76 FPS and anti-aliasing off at native 79, though the quality impact is huge. I definitely don't like how the game looks here. But if we leave anti-aliasing off and turn on upscaling by choosing maybe ultra quality for the render scale, most of the pixelated edges are gone, but there's a little bit of shimmer that's introduced now when things move around. From 88 FPS with anti-aliasing turned off, we can re-enable anti-aliasing with upscaling still on, but things get hugely blurry here. If you're going to play this game and can afford to, I'd recommend playing with anti-aliasing turned on at native quality versus any of the upscaling options such as ultra quality as turning off anti-aliasing makes it weirdly shimmery and degrades the quality in most options, but having it enabled makes the upscaling options seem way blurrier than they should be. So I'll be playing at native with anti-aliasing turned on for the best looking gameplay experience. For the most part, with pretty much all of these options on low, except for vegetation, maybe I'll put this on high, the game looks pretty good for what it is. Ultra adds a bit more vegetation and probably makes the world feel a bit more alive. So this is where I'll be playing and we can go ahead and raise most of the options that don't really have too much performance impact. I'll need to go through my own video to find that out as there's just so many options here, to be honest. I'll have all of the performance impacts of everything on screen right about now. And that's really about it. We've improved how the game looks and run through each of the options. So now you know which performance settings have the biggest impact on how the game feels as well as looks. For the most part, playing it native with anti-aliasing turned on is what you'll be aiming for. So adjust the rest of your settings accordingly, if possible. If you need to play with upscaling, then you need to play with upscaling. Thank you all for watching. That's really about it for this quick optimization guide. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.